Hey, it's the first official week of morning grind. Look, it's official. We had to run some tests last week, but we are here. We've got our rise and grind. We got to get us some official rise and grind morning coffee cups. Oh, the, the, those are coming. The, the rise and grind cups are. Coming. That's a good thing for everybody to have a little rise and grind. Hey, let's say good morning to my favorite microphone right here. This is this is Persephone. She's been around since two thousand seven. <laughs> and uh, and I love her, so y'all be nice to her. She's she's a really sweet girl. Well, we welcome a new microphone to the show. In the house. What's going on with you, Rodney? Man, it's been a it's been a little bit. You've been uh out of town and in in town and everything, and now you're back. Um, uh, it's it's been uh you know what this year has been so much travel involved. I pretty much have been somewhere in a different city every week. Uh, uh, since the new year started so i'm really glad to be home this week uh, especially for the whole week i know my family's glad i'm home but i also get a chance to get a lot of stuff done throughout the week as well and this was a great week to finally get the show going like it's supposed to go so those that don't know this show is going to be two th- tuesday through friday yeah every morning so you guys can get a chance to get your rise and grind on as we give you guys information, updates, tidbits, whatever the case may be, opinions about everything, not just locally, but everything that's affecting us as we get ready for our morning commutes to work or get ready to tackle the day or get ready to drop the kids off at of school or get ready to deal with that boss that you may not like. All too boss. Well. It happens sometimes. Part of the working working man's career. How to do that. And then on today's show, we got everything. Of course, we're going to get started with the weather report. We're going to talk a little bit about Errol Spence Jr. and what happened over the weekend. <clears throat> Local kid doing good. We'll get into the Amber Geiger case. It's now that there's been a trial date set. Woo. We'll talk a little bit about Dirk. So I got my hat on today, representing for that. Uh, then also presidential update from uh, our writing candidate, Omi D. Yes. Also talk about the college admission scandal and March... Madness has begun or will begin. Dun dun dun. dun so we'll talk about dun, that too. Dun, 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 we got a full show, man. Dun, Real dun, full show. Dun, 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 dun. Get me so crunk about March Madness, dog. I've, I've been waiting for this since World Cup was over. <clears throat> but look, let's go into the weather because it is Tuesday here, the 19th of March. And look, we got some interesting stuff coming from the united states today but it's not really that busy on the map kansas city you guys are at 55 still got some rain coming through the midwest right they're dealing with some heavy flooding over there right now in the midwest and those guys are really really toughing it out right now so prayers up for those guys 59 down there in hot Atlanta, miami southern florida you guys are going to be blanketed in rain for the next day or so 70 49 up <clears throat> excuse me in the big city of new york and it seems like the place to be today is going to be Phoenix for spring training. Go Rangers, 85 degrees, 63 with a couple showers in California, San Francisco and Portland sitting at 68 degrees in the cold spot. Burlington and Denver with a little snow for your Tuesday. And that is your weather. Thanks for the map. Big shout outs to the Weather Channel. So you got your killer in the background here. And if anybody's out there watching like to sponsor that weather report, Feel free to do so. Give us a call. We're looking for sponsors for the weather report. Take spot. Is, uh, weather girl, things of that nature. Uh, weather girl, if you want to come in, you want to come in, do the weather report every morning, 5 a.m. <clears throat> Cheers. Come on in. We'll we'll pop a little camera spot right over here under Rodney for you, and then we'll make sure you got the full weather deal. You know, when you come out there, and then bow, it'll just be you right there on that scene. But Excuse me, like I said, that's your weather, 70 degrees here in Dallas, and I will be wearing flip-flops today. It's officially flip-flops. Oh, that sounds good. It's flip-flop season, man. We had, our, I think, our last meteorological day of winter yesterday, and uh, Mm -hmm. I had on flip-flops yesterday, and I think I'm going to wear flip-flops for the rest of the week. I got on flip-flops right now. That's a good start. That's a really good start. Yes. Yes. Shout outs. What's the big story? Now, I was going to say shout outs to DJ Ben Wade for that new intro beat that we got checking out for y'all that tuned in before we got that fresh intro for you. Shout out to Ben Wade. So the big story, new, the sports story over the weekend here locally, of course, has to be DeSoto, Texas, on Mr. Earl Spence Jr. 
who is now 25 and 0 after a dominant performance over Mikey Garcia, another undefeated opponent who was uh, 39 and 0, but now 39 and 1 uh, after losing that fight. And it was a dominant performance from start to finish. Uh, to give you just an example of those that have not seen the fight yet, uh, it put it like this Mikey Garcia threw 75 punches total in a 12 round bite, 12, 12 round bout. Mm-hmm. Uh, Errol Spence threw 345 punches. God, they, those statistics when they brought those out <laughs> at the end of the fight, you know, it's like Earl Spence throws 367 uh, and Spence is 76. I'm like, did he? I mean, if you watch the fight, you can tell he was barely punching, but Earl was was all over him, bro. <clears throat> like his it was all over him the whole time, you know. And, and the thing about it is, I had no doubts in my mind that Earl would win the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, this, of course, was his first pay per view event. It was held at AT AT&T Stadium. It was a big, big draw. We had a lot of celebrities in town, boxing legends in town. Um, This is really the first kind of big event we've had like this since uh, the first uh, Pacquiao fight uh, at AT AT&T Stadium. And, uh, you know, the the thing I really was impressed by the most is those that don't know Earl or haven't seen him fight, he's he's a heavy puncher. Uh, He likes to knock guys out, period. Uh, his his brown his fights don't last very long. Matter of fact, that was the first fight he's ever had that went twelve rounds that went past the eleventh round yeah. ever in his pro career. Um, and he picked the right time to do so. And I think what Earl was thinking, at least at least the people I know that know Earl that work with him, uh, this was all about fighting a pay per view type of fight. Yeah. Okay. He is the next pay-per-view draw, wants to be the next pay-per-view draw. So he did the exact thing by really taking his time, winning the fight, dominating the fight from start to finish, but most importantly, letting it go 12 rounds so people felt like they got their money's worth, felt like they got saw a good fight. And uh, he is he has, the, the other than winning the fight in dominant fashion, <clears throat> putting himself on the map, but he has really solidified himself as the next pay-per-view draw all right and he, he did the he he fought the mayweather type fight yeah i mean he literally went in there beat the guy up didn't get hit came out looking good <laughs> that, that's how you fight in today's pay-per-view i mean he he did the he he could have done any better put on for the city had the lancaster band out there uh i mean he did everything right man i just my hats off to him I mean, he's the solo kid, so what? That's what I expect. But at the same time, man, the guy's gonna get paid. Oh, I'm talking about seriously paid. Oh, he's a big draw. Uh, he's talking about fighting Manny Pacquiao the next fight. I saw that. I saw that. You saw Pacquiao danced around it, and he's very happy to be here in AT and T. That's I don't know why he talks like that. He talks better English. That's all I understand. Like you're a senator or something to the United States ambassador. You you. Yeah, he just, for some reason, he just feels like he got to talk that day. But anyway, the Pacquiao fight thing would be great for, I mean, trust me, everybody in their mom was going to be there for the Pacquiao fight. I mean, you had 47,000 that came to see Spence fight Mikey Garcia. Yeah. You probably have about 60,000 come to see him fight uh, Pacquiao because Pacquiao is a big pay-per-view draw. And, and my guy's going to get super, super, super paid. Say, so look, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know if that fight is taken, Omi D and Rodney, Rise and Grind, will be there, media credentials, covering that fight. And we'll have it, you know, the next Tuesday when we start that show because it's going to be a Saturday. It's going to be a Saturday. Yeah. I, I'm going to talk about, like, it was so interesting to see how Dallas came out for fight night because I've been in Vegas for a fight night. And, Mm -hmm. you know, everything is interesting in Vegas because everything is centered down that one strip. And so everybody's kind of like in that same spot, like, oh, we're here for the fight. But Dallas is so spread out that everybody had to come to Arlington and Texas Live right there that they just built over in Arlington in between the uh, Cowboys Stadium and the Rangers Stadium was lit. But also on Facebook, man, it was so many people putting on, you know, the best, you know, their best best outfit trying to get ready to go to the fight bro and it was just it was exciting the buzz in the city was electric i'm not gonna say it was vegas but 
I guess him being from it's Dallas get, is as close as you get from being down here in the South and not on the West Coast. But we were buzzed. We were electric. Dallas was electric. The fight was electric. Like you said, one thing I did notice about Spence, he's really good with his angles, which is something I think that he's learned, you know, from some of the greater boxers. You know, I can say greatest, some of the greater boxers like Mayweather. Mm-hmm. He's very good with his angles. But he did, like you said, he's the next big pay per views draw. He's the next big fighter. He is is this day Roy Jones Jr. You know, yeah. so in about 10, 15 years, I look to see him sitting on the side with his microphone talking to somebody about boxing and, and, and the things that he's brought to the ring. But regardless, next fight, bro, we got to be there. I think we kind of missed out this time by, by catching yeah, it on pay-per-view. Yeah, you know. I agree, you know, and I have, I was actually going to, I was thinking about going, I went to the last fight he had at the start, yep. which lasted a few rounds, um, And but, you know, what I did is I ended up having, you know, some people over, watch the fight here, and it was a great fight to watch on pay-per-view because it did last 12 rounds. Yeah, you got your money. You know, this kid is so humble, it's hard, it's hard not to root for him if you're just a boxing fan or just a, a, a Dallas fan, a DeSoto fan. I mean, literally uh, two weeks ago, I, I I actually saw him running down Parkerville. Just uh, getting it, you know, running down Parkerville, part of his training. And if you if you grew up in this side of town in this area, it's hard not to just you know get behind this kid because he's he's a polished kid, doesn't get into trouble, doesn't start any trouble. Mm-hmm. He's not on the Adrian Broner thing, you know what I mean? He's not he's not like out doing that. He's not out doing the Mayweather thing. He's not moving to Vegas. I mean, he's right here locally, still doing it, still fighting here. And the relationship that he has with Jerry Jones just is about very to say that. Yeah. It's very interesting because I remember <laughs> at when the fight was at the star, I mean, Jones walked in with him at the fight. He was there to congratulate him when the fight was over. Uh of course everybody was, you know, and, and this was this was a time period when the fight happened last year. Yeah. At the start, when everybody was kind of like looking at Jerry to kind of side eye from the whole national anthem thing with the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Jerry was drunk. But he still showed up, and people still supported him. People still cheered him. And then if you saw Saturday night, man, he's in the ring with Mayweather taking pictures. He's got Demarcus Lawrence and Dak up there, the hot boys up there. They taking pictures. Say, Jerry is a businessman. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry, was in his, Jerry was in his elephant. On Saturday night, man. He's a businessman. He was definitely in his element. Nah, he uh, my dog is jumping after something, but nah, you definitely could tell. And Jerry seems when it's fight night, Jerry likes to put a couple, couple down, a couple wild turkeys mm-hmm. down. You know, you can mm-hmm. always tell because he's out there with that, with that, uh, that happy George Bush look. Man, I'm telling you, Jerry, Jerry. You know, one thing about Jerry, he may not, he, we all know he wants to win. But he wants to make money just as bad. Uh, uh, All right, so he looked around uh, and saw that forty-seven thousand in there. That paid for parking. That paid for drinks. That paid for food. That paid for tickets. And hey, come on hey, over hey, here, Hey, hey, you're my you're my favorite boy. <laughs> your favorite boy. We're good friends. We're good. Right? Yeah, uh, uh, he's a he's a a, a a local boy, and uh, 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 we we love him. And he's one of our guy, Earl Spence. Yes. If I could make him a cowboy, I would. I can hear Jerry saying that. Hey, a big shout out. I can hear him saying it too. Big shout outs to Earl for running down Parkerville. Look, if you ain't from DeSoto and you don't know, there's like not a sidewalk on Parkerville anywhere. Yeah, so, exactly. So either he exactly. either he's ditch running or he's trying to, you know, he's street running. So big shout outs to uh, Earl over there getting in on Parkerville. Shout outs to the DeSoto people. Don't run over Earl while he's jogging down Parkerville. If if anybody went to the Soto High School, you jogged down Parkerville. Oh yeah. At some point, yeah. you you had to run down Parkerville. <laughs> at some point in time, you might even had to drive fast down Parkerville at some yeah, point. Either either for a gym thing or uh, trying to get away from the somebody. Po- yeah. So, so, so you've been down Parkerville a couple Hill. times. A couple <laughs> times. Well familiar with that street on foot. Now, another news here locally. The other big story that's not sports related yes. has to be. Amber Geiger, Officer Amber Geiger, they finally set a court date. I believe the court date is August. Yes, I'm very excited about that. The summer is going to close out very hot. That'll be right during football preseason, Rodney. I mean, as in Dallas, this is the biggest trial since OJ. I mean, we're we're really looking forward to this. But 
if if you don't know, if you're not from here, if you're from out of the country or somewhere, and you're not familiar with the Amber Geiger and um, is it Botham John case? Uh, mm-hmm. Quick quick rundown, and then I'll let you jump back into it, Rodney. So these two people lived in the same apartment building. Uh, the victim lived on floor number four, and the alleged murderer police officer lady lived on the third floor well apparently she had been working overtime and we got a little interesting thing from the court about six hours of overtime that day and she drives into her parking garage structure and goes up in circles and goes to the fourth floor not the third floor where she lives the fourth floor walks down the hallway and the story goes as she gives it she sticks her key in the door and the door opens up like it was it was it was already kind of open so she goes into the 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 apartment she thinks this is her apartment but then there goes ghost everybody she thinks it's her apartment but before she realizes it's not her apartment get out the way son i'm trying to do a show before she realizes it's not her apartment she encounters a suspect who is both of john in his own apartment and she shoots and kills him so now this young man is dead. This young lady claims it, it was a mistake. She walked into the wrong apartment and thought this guy was a burglar as she was a police officer in her police officer uniform and shoots and kills him. So now this young man is dead and this young lady is now going to be on trial starting August 12th for murder. Yeah, it, it was it was such a uh, chilling case when it first happened. You know, you watch those that have seen the video, you know, you see her pacing back and forth. Um, mm-hmm. Do you see them wheel this man out? You know, trying to resuscitate him as they wheel him down the hallway. It's got something to say um, about that too. This happened. In, this happened in a very uh, high traffic area in Dallas. A lot of people live in this complex. Um, man, this is like you know when it happened. It just it, it you know and it happened at the wrong time when a lot of this stuff was going on. You know and. and I, of course, like we all know that it's a bunch of BS. Number of course, right? It, it, it just, it just, it's just totally BS. I'm, I'm looking forward to the trial. I hope it's a fair trial. Um, and the reason I say it is because you know those that don't know where we live here in Dallas, we don't have the greatest track record for fair trial. No. All right. Um, th- there's a lot of politics that goes into play when you're dealing with the police and what the police may or may not have done. Um, me and you were talking about this yesterday, getting ready for the show, man. And, and um, this is going to be a high, uh, stressful kind of like busting at the seams type of event. When we get ready for the trial on August 12th, I'm expecting a lot of protests. I'm expecting a lot of marches. I'm expecting a lot of clashes between police and citizens because everyone should be outraged about this everyone should be totally outraged no justice no peace a black man could get killed in his own no justice no peace by an incompetent police officer and i don't care who you are police officer uh patriot whatever you want to call yourself you cannot defend someone shooting somebody by accident or otherwise inside their own home you cannot <coughs> defend it that is that is you, you can't tell me anything to defend someone shooting somebody in their own home. Rodney, there's no way that this is defensible. Now, shout outs to Amber Geiger. You know, I'm just going to be real. You know, she kind of hot. She's kind of fine. So I'm going to tell you, Rodney, exactly what happened. If my dog will leave me alone long enough, there's no point in the city of Dallas wasting money on a trial. There's no point in the family saying they need to hire these high profile attorneys. Omi D has it all figured out for you right now. I'm going to tell you the exact situation, all right? I'm going to tell you what went down <clears throat> right here live on Rise and Grind with Omi D and Rodney, okay? So this is how the situation unfolds. These two people have been romantically involved at a certain point. What I want to see is, if you need some evidence, let's look at the cell phone records. If you notice, they haven't sequestered the cell phone records. They actually sequestered, this is interesting, uh, some records from Royal Caribbean Cruises because apparently after she murdered the young man, she somehow was able to get out of the country on a cruise. 
which I thought normally once you kill somebody or use, you know, alleged murderer that you weren't allowed to leave the city or the state or even the United States without some type of permission from a legal entity. So like you said, Rodney, thank you, ghost. Right, right now, son. Like you said, somehow this young lady has been able to um, escape a lot of what would be the normal things. But here's what happened. So on that day, I assume Mr. Botham Jean and her were some type of way romantically involved and they had decided to suspend this relationship or he had decided to suspend this relationship. So there's only one reason, Rodney, that any man, single man, is going to leave his apartment door cracked open after midnight in the city of Dallas. Do you know what that one reason could be, Rodney? Uh, I got a few guesses, but, the, but I think there's only one real truth. It was a booty call gone bad, Rodney. This is what this was. Mm-hmm. It was a booty call gone bad. So since they had already stopped talking, there was some type of animosity there because she was cut off and she was hurt because she still wanted to be involved. And there was another player in this picture, Rodney. And when this player comes into the picture, sometimes ladies and even sometimes guys, this becomes a real big problem. And his name is Mr. Good Dick. And Mr. Good Dick came through <laughs> and she was missing that and she was missing him. And so they was probably talking some, you know, well, I really want to be back with you and I really want to spend time with you. And he's like, nah, I don't know, I already moved on. You know, I'm not trying to deal with that. And, you know, da, 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 they might have got a little heated. Then she calmed him down. And, you know, then she's like, she's getting off. She's having to work all this extra overtime. So she tells him, I'm going to come by. Can I can I just come by? Can we just talk? And he's comfortable with that. It's a neighbor. He's lived upstairs from her. They've been intimate. How do I know they've been intimate before? This young man, they found a police backpack. They found some type of narcotics and a bulletproof vest that was smaller than the size that he wears in his apartment. There's no. And and why would he have a why would there be a bulletproof vest being found? In the apartment, it's so it's so. It's crazy. Look, I'm a black man from the United States. I don't own a bulletproof vest. He's a black man that doesn't even have, I guess, United States citizenship. Why would he have a bulletproof vest? And who sold it to him? You know, that, that's my question. But even then, why would you buy a bulletproof vest that's too small for you? At that point, so she agrees. He agrees to let her come over. He leaves the door cracked because she does not have a key to his house, and. She comes sauntering in the house and apparently there was an argument that ensued because we have a witness that says there was an argument that ensued. And I think in this argument, she finally got sick of him. He's like, you know what? I'm tired. Forget it. You can just go home. And somehow she got mad and enraged and she pulls out the pistol and she's like, oh, I love you. And he's like, I ain't trying to hear that. And she's like, I'll kill you. He's like, you ain't going to do it. And you know, trying to be a Billy Badass. I don't think she was even really intending to pull the trigger. I think she was just trying to threaten him with the gun. I don't think he even saw mm-hmm. the gun because it was dark. And she uh, shot him once in the chest. And uh, what I think this is the most troubling part about this story, Rodney, is if you notice, she didn't stop to administer aid. She exited the apartment and began mm-hmm. calling the police. And if you look at the video and you see her pacing and stuff, that's the pace of a worried person who's shot and hurt someone or hurt someone or someone is hurt that they have some type of emotional attachment to. You can see she's talking on the phone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you say, if you're a police officer and this is part of your line of duty, you'd have been in there on the phone, uh, 79 Mary 422, you know, we need backup, you know. First of all, when you went into a, your apartment and noticed that you saw a suspect, why didn't you turn the light on? Rodney, yeah. when have you ever walked into your apartment and did not turn the light on, especially if you thought you saw or heard something? Especially if it's dark. Yeah. It's dark. It's, it's in the middle yeah. of the night. Even though you're a police officer and you got a revolver or a service issue pistol, you walk into your apartment and you notice it's dark, you notice the suspect, the first thing you're going to do, <laughs> hell, the first thing you're going to do when you come in your apartment is to turn on a light. You want to see and the, something. And like, but we said yesterday, the light switch is right there by it's the right door. It's right by the door. It's right in, <clears throat> in, in any building, any room you walk into, home hotel room apartment whatever the light switch is right by the i'm door. looking at my light switch right by my front door when i come in my back door there's a light switch right there by the door when i come in here by my patio door there's a light switch right here by the door this young lady did not turn on that light switch because she had no intentions of turning on that light switch because 
they were going to go to the bedroom and talk this situation out. But somehow she was upset. I think she might have seen him with somebody else or saw some Facebook pictures with him chilling with somebody else. And she wasn't too excited about that. So then she killed the young man. So now he's dead. She's on trial for murder. She's already left the country one time after after being accused of murder. And I don't really feel there's a need for a trial. Let's look at the cell phone records, Rodney. Plain and simple. The cell phone records will show us that these two people were involved before this shooting. I, I don't care if y'all had some type of friend relationship. Look, y'all were involved and this young man left that door open and you knew you mm -hmm. were coming in there. I've seen how she comes to trial. She's very stoic. She's got her, her game face on. But I think when this trial comes out, Rodney, you're going to see somebody break down in the courtroom and she's going to it's going to be you're going to be able to tell if they don't bring this out. This was a crime yeah. of, of love. I'm not going to say it's a crime of passion because you were angry. You didn't see something. Like, ah! But right, right, but it right. was a love. It was a love. It was a booty call gone bad, Rodney. I like your theory. I think your theory is definitely supported by facts. The, the thing that you brought up, though, that everybody needs to realize is that there are several facts that have been suppressed in this case from the public because of the sensitivity of the issue. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we just don't know and we're not going to know until the trial. Um, like you said, the phone records, you know, no one's talking about that. Everybody forgot about the bulletproof vest that was found in, in the home. Um, you know, and again, like you said, the, the smoking, and I hate to use that term, I'm not going to use the term smoking gun, but the, the thing that people have to realize is the fact that, like you said, the apartment door was left open and no one leaves their apartment door open after one o'clock unless it's a booty call, period. Single. And not, no, no black man anyway. No black man leaves his door open Look. for anybody. Look like that unless there's something like that going I'm on. I'm a single black man right now. I got both boat locks locked. I got both boat yeah. locks on the downstairs door lock. Right. The boat lock on the back door is locked. The boat lock on the patio door is locked. After this shooting, I'm keeping every damn door locked because apparently she couldn't identify her own apartment. Rodney, I can walk into a room and tell when someone different is in the room because I can smell what that room right. smells like. my apartment smells different than the lady's apartment next door you know my friend's apartment smells different you can blindfold me and run me into 10 different apartments and then run me into the same one one time i'm going to tell you this apartment is the same one we've been in this one mm -hmm. before you know i can tell my dog is only a year old now i can let him off his leash and he can sniff and find his front door so how can she honestly expect us to believe that she didn't realize it's her apartment. It was not a hate crime, Rodney. She didn't go in there trying to off a black man and get her one for her hunting belt. She was in love or there was a relationship going wrong and this situation did not turn out advantageous for this young man. Well, as that trial gets ready to begin, we'll have a lot of information from that trial. I'm going to be covering it. I'm going to be all over it. Like, I'm going to miss work and everything. Yeah, this, this is... This is gonna be this is gonna be big, man. This is gonna be big. And if she if um, she gets off on this, Rodney, there's going to be a riot. Oh yeah. I'm not I'm oh, not yeah. no doubt I'm mind. not inciting it, but I'm just saying it's probably gonna be a riot and I'm, I'm probably gonna participate yeah. a little bit. I mean yeah. out there for media things. I'm gonna get media footage for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh in other local uh news, uh last night just real quick on the sports front, I have my uh Mavericks hat on as you guys can see. Uh, our friend, uh, friend of the show, Dirk Dewinsky, passed Will Chamberlain last night to be sixth all time in scoring. Um, and I had anybody told me 20 years ago when Dirk first popped up on the scene in 1998 that this skinny kid from Germany would score more points than Will Chamberlain, I probably would have taken that bet. Oh, yeah. Hands down. All day long. Hands down. I'd have take, I'd, taken it last year, probably. I was like, nah, he ain't going to play no more. He's done. The Dirk era is done. But, hey, big shout-outs to him, bro. Passing Will Chamberlain. He still got some big names, but I don't think he's going to get to number one because I think this is officially his last yeah. year. Yeah, you know what? Uh, and last night, man, was a big moment for him, you know. And it was a packed house to the AAC. And it, it, there's only maybe, I think there's only five more home games left, six or five more home games left. So all of those will be packed. Uh, the tickets are going really fast for those games because they know 
this could be the end. I mean, this is the big moment. There's only one more big moment left really to celebrate and they've got a game the the game before the last game of the season they play the Suns at home and that'll be his last home game um but then his final game man it, it fitting as it is the final game of the season will be on the road in san antonio mm. i mean it's it, you can't you know if you're gonna if you're gonna play a road game and your final game is a maverick that dirt you you play in San Antonio where you've had fifteen years of wars Dark. with those Spurs, Same. so that that's gonna be an awesome thing. I'm, I'm actually gonna go to that game. Oh, we we, we, we gonna go to that game? Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. But is that on a Thursday night? I don't know. I think so. I think it is. But I'm definitely gonna try to go see Dirk's last game. Dirk's always been a good friend of the show, good friend of what we do here at NTS Game. I was willing to do interviews, sit downs. Uh, and he's the only Maverick I ever seen show up to the locker room with uh, a styrofoam plate with four wrapped. Hey, back. you know you see so so, you seen his so wife. He, he you see only brother I seen show up with some. Four you seen his wife. His you seen his wife. It's, I don't know if his wife is from <laughs> Dallas, but you seen her. Yeah. She's a sister. <laughs> right. She's like, oh no, baby, you need some lunch for work today. It's like it's a professional. He's the only one I seen show up with a plate. Man. Either, he's the only one. Either that or his gra- or her, his grandma or his mother in law sent him to me. Baby, you need some food for work, Mama. He don't have that yeah. kind of job. <laughs> he don't have that kind of job. We laughed about that so hard, man. God, that's amazing. So hard, I said, bro. I said, bro, you official now. You showed up with a plate, plate Let's lunch. Let's say South Dallas finest. Official, Dirk is a legend around here. He's like a Dallas cowboy. He could he could walk down to the south. He could go through Big T Bazaar and, and not have no problem. Yeah, he could definitely go to Big yeah, T. Yeah, he's a legend. Big shout Big out. Big the Big only Big German Big legend in Dallas. I'm telling you. So, uh, real quick, let's jump real fast. By halfway through the show, let's get our presidential update right now with our writing candidate, Mr. Omar Lusk. For those that don't know, we election 2020 by really profiling Mr. Lusk and his views on the presidential uh, 2020 election and also some of the views of these candidates that seem to be coming from everywhere. We heard Beto's not running now. And Beto's $61 million deep already, bro. Uh, you know what? My, my thing, here, before you get into yours, man, I'm sorry, but I got to say this about Beto. Okay. I had hopes for Beto, but if you can't beat Ted Cruz, Dog. you can't win the election, man. Ted Cruz is... You can't do that. You can't. If you can't beat Ted Cruz, you cannot be the president. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put it like this, y'all. White folks don't like Ted Cruz. Yes, yeah, a lot of them don't like right. Ted Cruz down here, y'all. There's, there's a lot of white folks that hate Ted Cruz. Texans that hate Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz ain't even and a you Texan. Can't Ted Cruz, you can't win. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not very impressed by Ted Cruz at all. Period. And that that brings up a good point. If you can't beat Ted Cruz, you're gonna have a tough time winning. I mean, he did a good job of marketing uh, during the governmental election, and a lot of people know him on the scene right now and like i said he's 61 million dollars deep in the war chest so it's gonna be tough to hold hold a candle to beto but you know you got like 75 democrats running and like four republicans so and then trump's putting his hat back in the thing so look big shout outs to all six million of the democrat candidates that are running i hope one of y'all wins if i don't win and if you know what's fascinating about that when you say he already raised that kind of money, man, yeah. you think about it, there's but there's at least twenty five legitimate Democratic candidates, including Beto, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, he raises what, six million or something the first day or something the first hour or something like that. It's ama- it's amazing we can raise money like that in an hour, but let a let a Flint water crisis happen and we can't raise Nowhere near that kind of money. You you, put, you donate your money to a hopeful presidential candidate for tw- and it's gonna run in two years. Yeah, think about it. For twenty five billion, for the price of a wall, we could have Flint with clean, pure Fiji water. Yeah. You know these poor children that are getting lead poisoning up in the United States, and and our president is worried about other things i mean he's got a lot to worry about i mean hell yeah ha- half your cabinet is under investigation for stuff so you got yeah. a lot to worry about but your most important asset of this country is the children rodney the children are the most important asset of this country and those mm-hmm. children in flint you know i'm gonna say this shout outs to new zealand shout outs to the prime minister of new zealand as a write-in candidate as president 
I'm going to move that we begin to take swift action on measures that we need. Look, there was a mass shooting in New Zealand two, maybe three days ago. I think it was three days yeah. ago. They've already banned semi-automatic rifles in New Zealand. They've already pushed that through. Right. The government's already pushed that through. And in Australia, they've banned any use of Nazi stuff, period, that is now a jailable offense. Like, these countries are moving forward with legislation that helps move their countries forward in a positive tone. They're not all uh, divided by partisan politics, Rodney. They're doing what it needs to be done. Do I feel that we need to ban all the sale of semi-automatic rifles here in the United States? I'm not quite sure. I think we need to do some investigation on that. But what I am saying is the first thing we could do is we could send some money and fix that shit in Flint. Then we could look yeah. at the semi-automatic rifles. We've got to start protecting our children, Rodney. Like I said, education, that's one of my big pillars for yeah. for fixing this country because Everything starts with an educated populace, Rodney. And so this week we're going to talk about the things that I would like, some of the things I'd like to do here in the United States to help our educational system, right? So let's go with college education because Bernie is running around right now. And he's saying, let's give free college education to everybody. Let's just, let's, right. hey, if you want to go to college. That's a big, let's, that's a big part of his plan. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's just do it. Let's do it. I'm not with free college educations for everyone, but I am with free associates degrees for everyone. I think the basic degree, the first two years of college are very important. You take a lot of history classes, a lot of grammar, English classes, you learn to write resumes, the proper use of the word to, which we might need to do a segment on that, Rodney, a proper use of the word to, but you know, those are the kind of little bitty things that you pick up and it expands your mind those first two years of college because you end up taking sociology, psychology, sometimes anatomy, sometimes chemistry. You might find a passion. And if you find a passion, then I think we should make it easier for people to be scholarshiped into these universities after getting their associate's degree. But you're still even if you get a free four year ride from Bernie Sanders, you're still going to have to take those basics. So let's just get the basics free. You guys work hard. Get those basics done. Let's say maintain a C average and we'll scholarship you to whatever university that you want to go to in the United States. We've got plenty of money. We can fund college for the United States citizens. If these kids, if we are more educated as a populace, we'll be able to come up with better ideas. We'll be able to fund better things. We'll be able to shape our country better. We're just not really investing in our future right now, Rodney. So that's the first thing that I would like to do with education. That's the one we're going to go over today. And tomorrow, we're going to talk about um, my diverse educational panel and what they're going to do in the United States. So that's it you know, you, I agree with you, man. I, there's no reason why a kid graduating high school shouldn't already have their associate's degree when they graduate from high school as well. I mean, let, let, let's, let's just keep it all the way real. If you, you'll be able to do a high school education and the first two years of college in the four years that you're in high school, you should be able to. I know DeSoto has a program where many of their, um, and I know this because I just had a kid graduate last year. Uh, a lot of kids graduate from there with associate's degrees along with their high school diplomas. Yeah. Uh, the problem, though, that, that it is, it's not a universal thing. So many of those associate's degrees don't transfer to uh, some of the colleges that they may want to go to. Now, if you want to go locally, you probably don't have a problem. But if you're trying to go out of state or trying to go to a, a bigger school, a lot of times they don't accept all those credits to give you that leg up. And the reason they don't do that, oh, just so you know, because I work with a lot of schools, because it, it takes money out of their pocket. Which is greedy. You know, the, which makes completely no sense at all. You know, the, the truth of the matter is that schools make more money off of the, off of a graduating student than they do off of an undergraduate student, right? Yes. It's not until they become alumni of the school and start to give back that they really can monetize the person that's going there, you know, of course they have to pay their tuition and everything, but trust me, tuition, believe it or not, doesn't cover as much as, you know, what the alumni raise. I, I know alumni associations, they raise a billion dollars in a matter of 24 months. 
you know, just from a, a billion, yeah. seriously, a billion dollars. I was at a, I was at a school. I was at Seton Hall University last week in New Jersey, meeting with their alumni association, and they just got through doing a capital campaign, quote unquote, <laughs> which every school does, where they go through a silent phase of raising money, and then they go out to alumni, and they just hit a billion dollars in twenty four months. A billion dollars. Doc, that's that's a lot. Of, that's Kylie Jenner money. That's Kylie Jenner money. You know what I'm saying? A billion. Think about it. How, uh, how many uh, educations you could fund for a billion dollars? It's not even funding the education. It's, it's just paying the teachers. And they do it. And all they do with that is to build some building on campus or do housing or whatever. That could go towards education. Um, the, the other thing that's interesting, too, is that there's so much online education now. I mean, it literally, if you go on Facebook or go on a social media platform, you can probably find an, a program from some a, a prestigious school that you could take online right exactly. now. Exactly. That you don't even need to be a student at. You know, so everybody, so there's there's so many different ways to do that. And I always, it always bothers me that we get so stuck in such a traditional way of thinking that we just, we miss out on the opportunities that are at hand. And, then, and that gives us a bad position in the global economy because other countries are doing this. And it, it makes no sense that other countries do it and we can't do it. I think you bring up a, a great point when it comes to education. Rodney, other countries are evolving. Other countries are evolving their government. Other countries are changing laws. They're changing the standards that their government is run by. We here just keep putting post-it notes on top of the Bill of Rights. You know, we don't we don't want to take this document and probably rewrite this document, you know, for a, a community or a society. Three hundred years later, we're just like, hey, for whence thou go with thou bringeth to the market, thou payeth yon taxes like we, we don't.